Good morning and a warm welcome to our online service for 11am on the 25th of October. If this is your first time joining us, then you are especially welcome this morning. Just before we begin and we get into the service, I just want to share a couple of notices with you. The first notice is that on the 31st of October at 5.30pm, um, Ellie is going to be hosting a light party for the children. Um, it's going to be on Zoom and then there's going to be a watch party with them together watching something on YouTube together. If this is something that you'd like to take part in, then there is a sign up uh, page on Eventbrite that Ellie has emailed out. If you haven't got that link or you need it again, then if you contact Ellie, um, then she can send it on to you. The sign up closes tomorrow, so if you haven't signed up yet and your children want to come and take part, then if you make sure you've signed up by tomorrow, uh, Monday the 26th, then that would be great. It'll be a great time for all the kids as they gather together on Zoom for that light party. A second notice is that on the 14th of November, starting at 7.30pm, we are going to be hosting a big quiz event online. It's going to be a tier fund quiz. And the idea is actually to try and raise some money for tier fund, but also at the same time, we're going to have some fun together with the quiz questions. If you want to take part, if you want to sign up, then if you can go on to the St. Chad's website, on the gatherings page, there's an events page. And on that events page, there is a link for the tier fund quiz sign up. We want to encourage you to be creative in how you take part in that quiz. When we've done big quizzes before as a church, Normally we've had a, a table, a team of people that have joined together and if you want to create a team then you are more than able, um, it just would have to be done online. So it might be that you sign up with your small group or you sign up with some friends or family or it might be you just want to do it on your own. It's open to absolutely everyone. If you sign up with other people then it might be that you're all on uh, the, fa on the uh, Facebook call, you can see the quiz, you take part or maybe secretly WhatsApping the answers to each other as a team. However you want to do it, by all means, um, go for it. Be creative in how you take part and doing it with other people. But it's an opportunity to raise funds for Tear Fund and it's also an opportunity for us as a church family to have fun together. So that's the 14th of November at 7.30pm. So sign up again on Eventbrite for that. The final notice is that we've been hosting communion now on a Wednesday morning in church um, for a couple of months and it's been really great to gather together around the Lord's table but we're aware that for some, many people that work in the week that that time doesn't work for them and so we want to create the opportunity and space for people to come and receive communion um, if they wish to do so and we're going to do it monthly so the first Sunday of the month at 6.30 p.m. on a Sunday. So the first gathering is going to be the 1st of November, 6.30 p.m. in church. And it's an open invitation to everyone if you'd like to come and receive communion. Just so you are aware, it will be a short service, it will be a spoken service um, as we go through common worship liturgy for communion. But it's an open invite if you would like to come and receive communion. This morning, Richard is going to be talking about seeds. And so I was thinking like, for our little family game activity, what could we do to do with seeds? And we could have planted things or we could have done things with seeds, but actually, let's be honest, a quiz always goes down well with our church family. And just thinking about this, the tier fund quiz as well, I thought another quiz might be a little good fun opportunity. There are so many different seeds, and I just wonder how many seeds you can name. Not in total, but with some pictures. So we're going to do a picture round where there's going to be 10 different types of seeds that come up. And so as we go through, my challenge to you is can you name the seeds that you see on your screen? So the seeds should come up now, and they'll play 10, and then we'll go through the answers. You ready? 10 seeds, see if you can name them.
how did you do in those seeds? Did you get them all? Were there any that you struggled with? Well, let's go through. I'm going to play the answers now so you can see how you did. How many did you get? How many C's did you guess right? Were there any that were dead easy? Or were there any that were a bit hard? You see, seeds, they all look completely different. And creation, as Richard is going to talk about this morning, there's so much beauty in creation and so much diversity that it's just something to celebrate together. Let's take a moment now. We're going to pray and then we're going to worship together. So let's pray. Heavenly Father, we thank you for this time together this morning. We lift our eyes to you, the God of truth and of life, the God of grace and of love. Holy Spirit, would you come? Would you fill us afresh this morning? Would you bless our time? Would you inhabit our praises? In the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Let's worship together. The highest king would welcome me. I was lost, but he brought me in. Oh, his love for me. Oh, his love for me. Oh, the sun sets free. Oh, is free. I'm a child of God, yes I am Free at last, He has ransomed me, His grace runs deep While I was a slave to sin, Jesus died for me Yeah, He died for me I am who you say I am You are for me, not against me I am who you say I am I am who you say I am Who the sun sets free Oh, is free indeed I'm a child of God, yes I am In my Father's house, there's a place for me I'm a child of God, yes I am I'm a 
child of God, yes I am. I'm a child of God, yes I am. It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs So we pour out our praise, pour out our praise It's your breath in our lungs so we pour out our praise to you only Great are you, Lord Great are you, Lord mm. Great are you Good morning everyone. I would love for each one of you to join with me this morning as we pray. When I say the words, Lord, sow your seed in our hearts, can you respond wherever you are? Your word is life and strength. Heavenly Father, may your words of truth take root in our hearts and grow to rich maturity. May we hear your will for us and act upon it. May we take seriously our responsibility to encourage and nurture one another in faith at every stage and every age of life. Lord, sow your seed in our hearts. Your word is life and strength. Heavenly Father, may every act of selfless giving and every search for truth be richly blessed and rewarded. Disturb our assumptions and lead many to ponder more deeply the spiritual dimension of their lives. May the word of God reach all who are ready to receive it and let us set no boundaries here as to who they might be. Lord, sow your seed in our hearts. Your word is life and strength. Heavenly Father, make our homes places of love and growth, welcoming to all who visit them and accepting and forgiving to all who are nurtured there. Help us through the quarrels and the heartaches and remind us to honour one another as your cherished ones. Lord, sow your seed in our hearts. Your word is life and strength. Heavenly Father, May all those whose bodies, souls and minds are aching know the comforting and strengthening power of your companionship and the healing work of your love. May we be more ready to support and befriend one another through the difficult times in the name and love of the God we worship. Lord, sow your seed in our hearts. Your word is life and strength. Heavenly Father, we pray for all who are making the journey through physical death and as they put down earthly things and await your presence, bring us all to share with them your life in all its fullness. Lord, sow your seed in our hearts. Your word is life and strength. 
Heavenly Father, the rain and sunshine, the growing and harvesting, sing to us of your faithful love. And we offer to you our thankful praise for all your gifts to us. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now we bring some specific prayers for our world and our nation. Father God, we bring before you now um, the American presidential election, which is just over a week away. We pray for your will to be done and that all candidates will treat each other with respect and with honesty. We pray that all sections of society will feel their voice is heard and the newly elected president will be obedient to your work and to your wisdom. We pray for the continuing COVID crisis for all who are sick and those who have lost loved ones that they may know the wonderful power of your healing and your comforting presence. Finally, Father, we pray for all those connected to education who will be on half-term holidays this next week. May they be refreshed and renewed. And we particularly pray for those students studying GCSEs and A-levels that they will soon know with certainty what the situation will be regarding their exams in summer 21. We bring these prayers to you, Father, confident in the knowledge that you hear them and that you will answer in your way and in your time. Amen. The first reading is from Matthew 13, verses 31 and 32. Here is another illustration Jesus used. The kingdom of heaven is like a mustard seed planted in a field. It is the smallest of all seeds, but it becomes the largest of garden plants. It grows into a tree and birds come and make nests in its branches. And the second reading is from Mark chapter 4, verses 26. To 29. Jesus also said, the kingdom of God is like a farmer who scatters seed on the ground. Night and day, while he's asleep or awake, the seed sprouts and grows, but he does not understand how it happens. The earth produces the crops on its own. First, a leaf blade pushes through, then the heads of wheat are formed, and finally, the grain ripens. And as soon as the grain is ready, the farmer comes and harvests it with a sickle, for the harvest time has come. The reading is from Isaiah 55, verses 6 to 13. Seek the Lord while he may be found. Call on him while he is near. Let the wicked forsake his way and the evil man his thoughts. Let him turn to the Lord and he will have mercy on him and to our God, for he will freely pardon. For my thoughts are not your thoughts. Neither are your ways my ways, declares the Lord. As the heavens are higher than the earth, so are my ways higher than your ways, and my thoughts than your thoughts. As the rain and the snow come down from heaven and do not return to it without watering the earth and making it bud and flourish, so that it yields seed for the sower and bread for the eater. So is my word that goes out from my mouth. 
It will not return to me empty, but will accomplish what I desire and achieve the purpose for which I sent it. You will go out in joy and be led forth in peace. The mountains and hills will burst into song before you, and all the trees of the fields will clap their hands. Instead of thorn bush will grow the pine tree, and instead of briars the myrtle will grow. This will be for the Lord renowned for an everlasting sign which will not be destroyed. As part of our series on harvest, this week we're going to look at the miracle of seeds. Pray with me as we do this. Lord God, we thank you that your seeds, your creation brings new life. And may that be true in our lives in this season. Speak to us today, we pray, through the miracle of creation. So one of the first things I want to say today is what have you been noticing during lockdown? Have we been noticing the beauty of the world around us? I think many people have. We've been noticing the bird song. We've been noticing the wildlife. We've been noticing the change of seasons, the different stunning colours that we see around us. These are all part of um, things that God is waking us up to as there's less uh, air pollution, as there's less noise. We become more aware of the beauty of God's creation around us. And this is a stunning and wonderful thing. It's a beautiful aspect of waking up to God at work. Sometimes when we think of creation, we think of it as a static thing. We see, we catch a snapshot, maybe a beautiful array of um, autumn trees like this. And we see a, a single moment, a photograph that captures the beauty of creation or a wonderful view from the top of a hill. But as well as that, the beauty of creation is the beauty of the ongoing miracle of consistent creation, that creation recreates. When we think of the big picture of the biblical view, it's a story. It's a story of God creating in the world, but he creates a world that is beautiful and wonderful. And that world grows and in it, he's built the seasons. And it's a story that goes towards the wonder of his kingdom at the end. But into his creation, he's built cycles of life, cycles of growth, cycles of seed going into the ground, seasons bursting into bloom, growing into new life, food, provision, and more seed. And it's an amazing miracle. It's something I've been pondering over the last few weeks as we considered this time of lockdown. What is God doing? Just, it's a very simple thing. We've known since primary school, but seeds bring life and God's miraculous way in which things go into the ground and grow into something that seed bearing is an amazing miracle. Our three Bible passages today all speak of that amazing miracle of the seed as a metaphor for the way that God's word and his kingdom planted in our lives grows. Whether we know it or not, he is at work. Seeds work under the ground whether we notice them or not. We see that in our Bible reading today. And God is at work in us whether we're aware of it or not. The first thing I want to say as we think about this theme of seed and harvest is how are we caring for the planet God has given us? How are we caring for the creation that he's given us? Seeds grow in the right context. They grow where they're cultivated and looked after well. They grow where they are protected. And if we do not take care of the planet God has given us, then actually seeds and harvest will stop happening. There won't be the new life that we long for. And so part of what God is doing in the church is waking his church up to the beauty and the value of seeds and harvest, of life and its goodness and caring for the planet. Our younger generation have a passion for this and we as those who are older need to respect and value the planet that they are going to inherit and they're, they're going to pass on to their children and grandchildren, that we care for the world around us, that we protect it and value it, that we don't just see it as a disposable unit for our exploitation, but something that God has given us. I want to think of this theme of seed and harvest in the terms of the slow, steady things God does for us. One of the things I've been aware of during lockdown is a change of pace of life and how addicted we are to the immediately. 
how addicted we are to, to microwaving, not marinating, to moving fast, to ordering things online and they get there the next day. We are a culture in a hurry. And I know this is a theme many of us have been thinking about. As we consider that hurry that we live in, we are unaware of the fact that God is at work under the surface when we don't realize it. He's at work when we are not aware of what he's doing. God works steadily and he works in us steadily. And some of our spirituality can be addicted to the immediately that I want it now, I've got to have it now. Part of that I think can be uh, in our way we approach prayer and the Bible. We pray and we expect God to answer straight away but don't realize that in the long run he is at work. And the Bible we often celebrate and enjoy the amazing moments of the, the dramatic breakthroughs, the stunning uh, stories, testimonies of life, but we miss the beauty of the steady work of accumulation. Many of us are taking the Bible course at the moment and it's a, it's a steady understanding of God's Word. And His Word works that way, that as we get to know the Bible better, we gradually shapes our worldview. I've been thinking a lot about how the Bible has shaped the worldview around us and how that's crumbling as a world becomes more greedy. I've been thinking in uh, the Bible reading, I've been looking at Deuteronomy and Proverbs and the contrast in Proverbs between the wise and the foolish, alongside a novel I'm reading, which is a contrast of those with evil intent and those who work with integrity. And seeing that the values the Bible gives us of valuing each person, of generosity to the poor, of integrity and honesty are so fundamental to our society. And if we lose sight of those, then actually things will crumble. These things like seed just step into our lives and the view of the Bible is that the ongoing work of God in our lives bears fruit in the long run, not just the immediately. And maybe COVID is a time for us to care more about the bigger picture, to grow in patience, to see the longer story. There are all sorts of things we can't do right now, restrictions, things we miss. And if we focus only on what I can't have now, it hurts, it frustrates us, it, it feels a sense of loss. But when we consider what God will do, what God is doing. This morning I got out on my walk, as you can see I'm on a lovely sunny walk, and it just occurred to me, we live in a beautiful place. The world is good, God is kind, and we are blessed in many ways. Let's count our blessings and live in that gratitude and this time. The sermon you just heard, I recorded last week on our walk. I was just walking and praying, felt like the right time to uh, try preaching the sermon. But I wanted to give some time now a few days later just to pray and respond to what we've just heard about God's word as seed going into our lives and how we reap what we sow. So um, we're going to have a time of prayer ministry now. We've not done this on video very often but I'm going to pray and give some space. But I invite you to encounter God now as I lead you in prayer. I'm going to be praying. I'll be giving uh, time for you in silence just to, to welcome the Holy Spirit to come and speak to you. Let's pray. Lord God, as we consider your word as seed going into our lives, consider that you work steadily and gently in our lives. Pray now in this moment that you would work in those seeds you've already placed in us during COVID. The truths that you have brought home to us. I mean, may they germinate and grow more deeply in our lives right now. Just pause and give space for the Holy Spirit to come close. Maybe hold your hands out in a receptive mode. Don't know whether you're watching this alone or with others. You might want to sit or lie down or stand or find a different posture that, that recognises that you're now in the presence of God, receiving from him, letting him work. Sometimes I place my hand on my heart to say, Lord, come and work in me in the depth of my being. Lord, come and work within us. You work steadily and slowly, but we ask you to work in this moment. We give you permission to keep growing that seed in our lives. Let the truth that we are loved become more real. Let the truth that there is hope, hope in you, hope even in the dark times, become more real. Lord, I want my roots to go more deeply into you, into your truth, into your goodness. Maybe ask God, he has seeds of truth, things he wants to say to you today, words of life for you in this moment. Just listen to the Holy Spirit. Maybe that God has a particular phrase or a word or a scripture that he wants to give you right now that will bring you hope, encouragement and be a seed in your life. Just give space to listen to God.
Lord, we trust that you are at work in every season. You're at work in our lives right now. We welcome your work. Thank you for the seeds you plant. May they grow fully into all that you are doing in us in this time. Give us patience. Give us your grace. Help us to see your bigger picture. Come Holy Spirit. And so we join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Well, that brings us to the end of our service this morning. Um, do join us at 12pm on Zoom for our weekly catch-up. It's just been such a blessing to catch up with people week by week um, and to talk to people that maybe you've never spoken to before and to gather as a family together. So at 12pm, that's on Zoom. And if you haven't got the Zoom code, but you'd like to receive it and you want to join in, then you can always email us at office at stchadsromley.co.uk or you can send us a message on Facebook Messenger and we will happily send the code to you so you can join us. Let's just join together as we pray a prayer of blessing on our community. So I invite you to stretch out your hand and repeat after me. God bless Romley. God bless our schools. God bless those that are scared at this time. God bless those that are alone. God bless our businesses. God bless our NHS and key workers. God bless the neighbours to the left of us. God bless the neighbour to the right of us. God bless Romley. And so a final prayer of blessing for each of you. May the Lord bless you. May he keep you. May he make his face to shine upon you to grant you his peace now and always. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son and the Holy Spirit be with each of you now and always. Amen. Have a fantastic week and we'll see you next week.